Hi guys, welcome back to another reading of Fragments of Light, um, the first book in the Spectrum of Magic series um, by yours truly, me. Um, before we begin chapter three, I would like to just um, forewarn everyone that there is um, cussing and swearing in this chapter, um, just in case if anyone is sensitive to swearing. Also, I'd like to um, mention the fact that I'm sorry that my eyesight, um, I kind of go off that way. Um, I know in one of the videos I said that I'm getting used to this format, um, with the horizontal format. I'm kind of used to the vertical format, so again, I apologize. Again, so this is Chapter 3 in Fragments of Light um, by Beth Hodson, me, so... Let's begin. The fuck is wrong with you? The tattoo artist grunted. If you keep moving, it'll look like I smeared shit all over you. Gripping the cigarette with his mouth, Kyle took a long drag then ex and exhaled a stream of smoke. Sorry, man. He tried to review the artist's work on his right bicep through the corner of his eye, but between the amount of alcohol in his bloodstream, the smoke, and the artist's needle, Kyle couldn't see shit. Instead, all he saw was a cigarette in his mouth, the rings on his fingers at his side, the dark red walls with pitted holes, and his friend Diego, all simultaneously blurred together. It was about time you got that shitty yellow out of your hair, Diego commented, inspecting his freshly bleached white hair. It looked like a dog took a piss on you. Thanks, asshole, Kyle remarked, taking another drag. It doesn't fucking help with everything being so damn expensive with this new tax shit. Plus, I don't have Sonia around to bleach it anymore. She was pro at getting it white, and best of all, free. It was about the only thing she was good at, he thought, trying to sneak another peek at the tattoo. I dodge a bullet with that chick. What are you doing after this? Diego asked. Nothing, why? Let's get lit at my place. I'll get the other guys to come over. It'll take your mind off that crazy-ass bitch. Diego took a swig at his flask, then slammed it into his hip pocket. I was trying to forget about her, Kyle sighed. He continued to puff his cigarette periodically while the tattoo needle hammered into his bicep. He was uh, somewhat numb throughout his body, all thanks to the alcohol, and the needle felt like nothing more than someone poking him with, his, with their finger. Well, you were the one to bring her up, Diego said. Whatever. Just fucking forget about it and get, and get shit-faced at my place. We'll swing by the corner store and get a few 40s. I'll even pay this time, Diego said. Nah, dude, Kyle answered as he exhaled a sizable puff of smoke. I think I'm going to go home. I don't feel up to it. Besides, I need to practice. You can go home and jack off whenever you want. You haven't hung out with us in a while outside of practice in our shows. Just come over. Kyle scowled, um, glaring at Diego through his smoke. Fuck you. Can't a guy go home and be alone? I didn't know I needed to service you. Do you fucking mind? The artist snapped. Kyle realized he moved again. Won't happen again, Kyle said to the artist. Turning to Diego, Kyle pointed his free hand to him. And no... I'm not going out tonight. I need to practice. Plus, I'm tired of shit. If it'll make your ass happy, I'll come out another night. Fine. But if you don't come out with us in the next few nights, I'm dragging your ass out. Diego snickered, guzzling at his flask. The artist paused, turning off the tattoo machine. See what you think. Kyle took another drag of his cigarette, exhaling quickly. His fingerless black leather glove snatched the cigarette butt from his mouth, putting it out into the ashtray next to him. He stumbled out of the chair, looking in the dirty mirror on the adjacent wall. It looked like someone had snotted all over it, then rubbed it around for good measure. Through the dingy reflection, Kyle saw the line work was clean and precise, or so he thought. It was hard to tell for sure with his, through his drunken eyes. The fresh black ink shot out in contrast with his complexion of his muscular arm. The skin around his newly inlaid design was deep red and slightly puffy, with the ink seeping out of the skin. 
It was about time Kyle added to his tattoo. It had been a while. His black tattoo consisted of sharp, angled lines plastered on his right bicep. He started this tattoo back when he left his home in the wastelands and when he came to Arcadia. Every time something major affected his life, he would add another thick black line angled in a new direction, like a giant life maze. Big event called for long lines. Small events were shorter. Kyle always had told himself once a tattoo reached his hand, he should be dead, because what fun would it be to be an old ass unable to get around in life? As of right now, his tattoo reached two inches above his elbow. The last line he added was meeting his ex, Sonia. The line before that was from his first gig with the band. The one before was word of his mother passing, and on and on until the beginning. This new line was because of his split with Sonia. Damn, I'm going to die before I hit 30 at this rate, he told himself. He flexed his bicep, then gave a, himself a small, satisfying grin at the sight of his muscles protruding from his sleeveless black leather vest. His dark eyes moved to his angled chin, then to his spiky hair. His silvery white hair was as, almost as light as he was, standing out against his dark eyebrows. Damn, it was a good thing he rebleached his hair like Diego said. He had been looking like major shit of his late. Looks good, man, Kyle said with a nod of approval. His attention turned his ears, each lobe stretched with a curved black spike earplug. Not today, he told himself, thinking how much he wanted to stretch out his lobes bigger. Pulling a few crumpled up bills from his black leather pants, he paid the tattoo artist. The two of them staggered out of the tattoo parlor, which was a few levels up from the street level. It was nearing dusk, and all of the street lights were already on. Kyle hopped onto a metal staircase railing, sliding down faster than he expected to. Diego followed him, both of them chuckling. The metal studs in their clothing rubbed against the railing, making a slight screeching sound. As they slid past them on their way to the bottom, passerbys holding giant protest signs, shot them a look of annoyance. Kyle and Diego reached the ground level, hopping off onto the sidewalk. The street was packed with rioters. The citizens of Arcadia had gathered much earlier today, compared to the last few days. Who could blame them? The royals were taxing the fuck out of its citizens with their new tax laws, and the people were pissed. Street fires were ablaze, while rioters threw bottles, trash, and other objects at the buildings, then looting them. Others were more daring, throwing objects at the Arcadian police, who blocked it all with their shields. Kyle turned his attention to, the ground, to a large ground vehicle on fire, its plumes of bl smoke blanketing the crowd. Damn, I forgot about the protests, Diego said, lighting another cigarette. Yeah, me too. Let's get our bikes and get the hell out of here. I'm really going to be pissed if I see it on fire. Same here. You sure you don't want to hang? Diego asked as they both squeezed their way in and out of the inflamed crowds. Yeah, I'm sure, Kyle replied. They both made a fist, then tapped them together. See you tomorrow, bro. Don't be fucking late like last time, Diego yelled at him through all the street noise, hopping onto his motorcycle. We want to keep our gigs with this place lined up. You're starting to sound like Remy, Kyle said. Asshole. Don't worry, I'll be there on time. Later. Turning to his bike, Kyle climbed onto it, then started his engine. They both took off in the narrow back alley, leaving the riots to fend for themselves. Riding away from that sector's protest, they approached the next city sector. Dago turned off on a different route, leaving Kyle to ride alone. Ahead, massive gridlock of ground transports crammed the roadway, but the traffic never slowed him down. He simply wove in and out between the vehicles, leaving them behind to wallow in the street trash in the rank sewage, sewage stench. Within the street puddles, Kyle could see the reflected neon light signs from the shops in the local strip clubs. Fog steamed through the sewers, capturing the city lights casting the street level in a thick haze of all sorts of colors. Occasionally, Kyle's eyes would dart up at the glowing skyway, skyways above him, 
seeing shadows of people crossing between the buildings, the crowds of people on the sidewalks, the other biker gangs, the shitty ground, ground transports, shitloads of trash, and the smell of piss and vomit, all worked in harmony to make the lower levels of Arcadia what they were. This is what freedom was like. The winds beating his face while he drove through the city, free of everything. He didn't have time to think, he just drove, emptying his mind of everything that pissed him off. The city, him, the city itself tried to confine and keep people controlled, but not him. His motorcycle liberated him, that and his guitar. Reaching his apartment building, Kyle turned into the underground entrance and parked his motorcycle. Pressing the parking elevator's button, Kyle lit up a cigarette while he waited. Then the elevator opened and he continued to puff his cigarette, then pushed for the 36th floor, the highest of the lower levels before one needed to pay the tax with an Arcadia transportation issued key card. Fuck the tax. He didn't need to go to the damn mid-levels anyways. Those people had sticks up their asses. When the elevator opened on his level, Kyle dropped the cigarette to the elevator's floor, rubbing the butt into the ground. Walking down the hall, he stopped at his apartment, pulling out his keys. The door across the hall opened. Rosie. Rosie appeared from behind her door, taking small steps that exasperated in her old age, making it seem like she was about to crumble at any moment. Her pet rat was perched on her shoulder with his nose twitching. The thing was like a damn parrot to her, always attached to her body whenever he saw her. Shifting his eyes to her doormat in the hallway, Kyle noticed a new celebrity gossip magazine that had been delivered. With her shriveled hand shaking it to reach the tabloid, Kyle shook his head, grabbed it, and handed it to her. I can't believe you read this shit, Kyle stated, making sure that Rosie had a secure hold on it before he released his grip. What's up, Zaphod? he said to the rat, stroking its fur with one of his fingers. That girlfriend of yours was it was here earlier, she said, her voice wobbling. She was screaming and pounding right outside your door. I think she had one of too many drinks. I got several complaints from the other floor tenants, so I threatened to call the authorities. God, Sonia just won't give up. She's fucking crazy, he thought. Well, did you? he asked. The woman smiled and nodded, petting her pet rat who moved to her hand. That convinced her to take a hike. I told her if I saw her face again, I wouldn't even give her warning. Sorry about that, Rosie. I didn't want to see her any more than you do, believe me, Kyle said, fidgeting with the lock on his door. I don't even have a phone anymore, thanks to that woman. He continued to fuss with the lock, kicking the door while turning the key. Rosie watched him struggle. You want me to have someone fix that? Don't bother. I don't need to, I just need to give it a good kick every once in a while, Kyle muttered under his breath, trying, finally prying the door open. If you say so. Turning to her magazine, Rosie giggled like a small child. Prince Derek, rumored to be in Arcadia, she shuffled to her apartment, closing the door behind her. Rosie and her magazines. Who gives a crap about some damn prince, he thought, as he entered his apartment and closed the door behind him. And that's chapter three. Thank you for listening.